So far we have defined a bunch of different notions starting from dominance to Nash equilibrium and finally we have also talked about the max mean. Uh, so by dominance uh, we have seen that it is it cannot explain all reasonable outcomes because there are games where uh, no dominant strategy exists. Uh, then we have seen pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, where unilateral deviation is not uh, uh, beneficial which gives some sort of a stability guarantee. And max mean is essentially a uh, rationality for the risk aversion when you cannot uh, when one player is not un uh, sure about whether the other player is going to play according to the uh, to the uh, rationality and intelligence uh, uh, that we have assumed, then it gives some sort of a security that even if they play that max mean strategy, they are guaranteed to get that max mean value. Now, what we are going to see, and we have also seen uh, a technique of finding the pure strategy Nash equilibria via iterated uh, elimination of dominated strategies. Now, uh, in this module, we are going to ask what happens to these notions like uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, and maximum uh, properties uh, when uh, you eliminate the strategies, eliminate some of these dominated strategies. So we have seen this example earlier that if we uh, if we remove some of these uh, strategies, uh, some of the weakly dominated strategies based on in which order we are uh, removing these uh, strategies, it might end up in uh, two different reduced games and therefore the, the predictions could be different. But the question is does it change the max mean value? So let us look at uh, the uh, one example for player one. So let's say um, we are first looking at player one and we find that uh, B is a weakly dominated strategy for player one because M weakly dominates it. Yeah, we have seen this in the earlier uh, module. So if I remove this, what happens? So before removing the strategy B, uh, what was the max mean uh, value for player uh, one? So let us just uh, erase this part. So what was the max mean value for player one? Uh, so in uh, for this row the maxima uh, uh, the minima was zero uh, here the minima was two and here also it was zero so the max mean value was two for player one similarly if you look at the columns uh, this is the minimum value here this is also the minimum value here zero and this is the minimum value for the player two so the uh, for player two the the minimum value the maximum of the minimum value was zero so the max mean value was zero now once we have removed this dominated strategy b uh, then uh, uh, you can see that the minimum value for player 1 uh, is 2 here and minimum value 0 here. So the max mean value for player 1 remains 2 while for player 1, uh, sorry player 2, uh, the, uh, the, the minimum value here is 2, here the minimum value is 1 and here the minimum value is uh, 2 again. Uh, so the max mean value will not be 1, it will be 2. Okay, so you can see that if I re remove uh, the strategy, so for the player whom I am removing the strategy, that player's uh, max mean value did not change, uh, but it, it might have changed the max mean value for the other player, in this case player 2. So this is the observation, max mean value is not affected for the player whose dominated strategy is removed. And this is not just a uh, coincidence, uh, in fact we can uh, formally prove that this is uh, this is what is going to happen for uh, the player whose uh, dominated strategy you are removing, uh, her uh, max mean value is not going to get changed. So let us uh, formally state that in the form of a theorem. So consider a, um, a normal form game and we know how to represent the normal form games. Um, the, the strategy, the, uh, the player set, the strategy set and the utilities of all these players. And suppose we uh, identify one strategy, um, SJ hat, uh, which is a dominated strategy for player J. And uh, once we remove that, the residual game is uh, denoted by G hat. Uh, after removing this strategy, the dominated strategy is j hat. 
So the theorem claims that the max mean value of J in this re residual game is equal to the max mean value uh, in the original game G. So uh, before uh, jumping into the, uh, the formal proof, let me give you a, uh, an intuition why this is uh, going to happen. So if you look at the, the previous example, you can see that when we are trying to uh, uh, eliminate, when we were eliminating the dominated strategy for player one, uh, what is going to happen? Uh, the max mean value is the maximum of all the minimums. And uh, the only way you can change the max mean value is if you uh, remove that strategy. Now we are only removing the strategies which are dominated. And you can uh, you can build the intuition that this um, uh, the, the that strategy cannot be a dominated strategy because it's a max it cannot be a dominated strategy, so that's the that's the intuition here, and we are going to make that a little more formal. So let us start with the max mean value of the uh, of this player J in the original game G, so which is denoted by V J lower bar. And by definition, it is the maximum over all SJs, uh, which is in uh, capital SJ, and minimum over all S uh, minus Js. And this is the this is the definition of that uh, utility, uh, definition of that maximum value. Now, uh, let us look at the uh, residual game, the G hat game, uh, where we have uh, it's the same expression. The only difference that has happened is now the strategy is set. Uh, for player J has uh, reduced by one and it does not have that SJ hat anymore. Fair enough. Now because SJ uh, hat is a dominated strategy in the original game, then there must exist some uh, strategy, some strategy for the same player, uh, which is certainly in the uh, in this set, uh, in the set SJ minus uh, this SJ hat. That means this, uh, this strategy uh, also lives in the residual game, uh, which is at least as much as the utility uh, uh, of that player when he plays SJ hat. And this is going to be true for all S minus Js. No matter whether this is strictly or weakly dominated, um, this inequality, because this is a weaker inequality, this is going to hold for all uh, strategies, for all uh, S minus Js. Good, so we, we know these two results. Now we are going to uh, make a sequence of uh, implications of these two observations. So first thing is that if I just uh, do, a, do a, take a minima over the same thing, so this thing here on the left hand side, if I just take the minimum, um, so and suppose that uh, the minimizing strategy profile of all the other players is denoted by S minus J hat, so this is uh, this is just uh, uh, denoting the same uh, minimum value of that uh, minimum value of that utility of uh, player J when uh, player J is picking this strategy T J, and then we, we know that because this is uh, uh, this strategy dominates the strategy S minus I S uh, J hat, so therefore it uh, it uh, this inequality must be true, uh, and this is a direct consequence of this. Uh, it should hold for all S minus Js. So in particular, for this S minus J tilde, also this inequality should hold. So this is, uh, this inequality is obvious. Now this last inequality is coming because of the definition of uh, minima. So again, we are using the same old trick that uh, if you pick one specific S minus I J tilde, then it must be at least as much as the minimum over all my S minus Js. And when the player is playing this S minus uh, S J hat, Okay, so uh, putting these two things together, we know that this part, uh, this minima is uh, greater than this minima here, right? Now what we are going, going to do on, the, uh, on the, this part, so we are just going to take the maxima over all the, uh, 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 all the strategies in the residual game. So we are looking at the strategies in the residual game. We are uh, uh, maximizing over that uh, minimum value. So this is the uh, this is the minimum value, uh, and that will definitely be at least as much as the left hand side of this uh, uh, quantity, uh, left left hand side of this inequality, because this is a very specific strategy, and because we are taking the maximum over all strategies uh, in that set in the residual set, 
then this must be this inequality must be true tj is just one uh, member of that set now uh, by the previous implication here in the previous line we we know that this inequality also holds so what we have finally um, uh, said here is that this term which we know is the uh, v uh, v uh, lower bar so we have also defined this so v lower bar j hat so this is the maximum value of the residual game so v lower bar j hat uh, which is the maximum value if you want to compare that you can see that uh, the left hand side is exactly the same as this so the maximum value of the residual game g hat uh, is uh, something that we have shown to be at least as much as the minimum of uh, uh, of this quantity uh, when that player is playing uh, sj hat and all the other players are uh, so uh, we are taking the minima over all the other players strategies Okay, so let's uh, uh, mark this as one we'll use this inequality so we can remove this intermediate part We just want to remember that this inequality holds vj hat uh, Lower bar is essentially at least as much as this quantity on the right hand side So how can we uh, uh, make use of this thing? So let us start with the uh, maximum value of the original graph so this is vj lower bar by the definition we know that this is max over sj in capital sj and mean over s minus j which is in capital s minus j uh, over all the utilities of that player now we can uh, divide this set sj is a is a large set um, and there is one specific uh, element here sj hat uh, which is a which is a dominated strategy so we can actually partition this set all these uh, elements which are uh, on this side is sj minus uh, this particular uh, strategy is uh, sj hat so uh, it, it, the because we are taking the max it is a max over this as well as that so we can clearly write that this is a maximum over the same thing we have the same utilities here so we are, we are just copying it here and we are taking the first the maxima over this residual set and then taking the maxima over uh, over the other uh, so there is no maxima because there is only one element here so we can just plug that value in sj hat and uh, if we look at these two values the maximum will be exactly equal to the maximum value that we have uh, defined earlier now what we already know from the previous example so this uh, this is nothing but so this part if you if you remember again this is nothing but vj lower bar hat because this is the maximum value in the residual game and we have already shown that that value is at least as much as the right hand side so uh, uh, this value here is at least as much as this value which we have written here so the max value will certainly be the vj hat there is no doubt about it so this uh, uh, this particular part the first uh, entry in this uh, maxima is going to emerge as the maxima value of the whole uh, uh, whole quantity which is the vj uh, vj hat lower bar which is the maximum value of the residual game so we have actually proved that the maximum value in the original game is the maximum value of the reduced game and if you uh, look at this uh, the intuition that i was talking about uh, is because uh, you, your uh, strategy which is which you are eliminating um, is is a dominated strategy uh, strictly or weakly uh, that particular part will not play a role in this maxima so that is exactly what we have formally proved that intuition we have formally proved in this case